we recently launched the Liberation Martial Arts online for trainers, collectives, and individuals that were looking for a program to follow that was chud free or perhaps one that came directly from us. Thanks to Charlie Birch, Yanni Jiang, and Thomas Wakefield for signing up. If you would like to sign up for Liberation Martial Arts Online, or you just want to increase your financial support of the Southpaw Project, you can find special tiers on our Patreon. If you'd like to listen to all of our shows without any breaks or interruptions, you can find uncut versions of our shows also on Patreon. This is Sam. And this is Southpaw. Seize the day. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Because we are food for worms, lads. Because believe it or not, each and every one of us in this room is one day going to stop breathing, turn cold, and die. Out of the exceptional works of late actor and comedian Robin Williams, three performances stand out to me. But not for the acting, though that was great also, but in what they can teach us about living more examined lives. The first lesson is on the wisdom of innocence. In The Fisher King, written by Richard Lagravenez and directed by Terry Gilliam, Robin Williams plays a homeless man who's haunted by past traumas. It's an enigmatic film and one of my personal favorites, but it can't be explained by any simple summary. However, There is a scene where Williams tenderly delivers the Arthurian legend of the Fisher King that brings this complex film into focus. But a part of me wonders how much this story is also a metaphor for the life of Robin Williams. Did you ever hear the story of the Fisher King? No. Begins with the king as a boy, having to spend the night alone in the forest to prove his courage so he can become king. And while he's spending the night alone, he's visited by a sacred vision. Out of the fire appears the Holy Grail, the symbol of God's divine grace. And a voice said to the boy, You shall be keeper of the Grail so that it may heal the hearts of men. But the boy was blinded by greater visions of a life filled with power and glory and beauty. And in this state of radical amazement, he felt for a brief moment not like a boy, but invincible, like God. So he reached in the fire to take the grail, and the grail vanished, leaving him with his hand in the fire to be terribly wounded. Now as this boy grew older, his wound grew deeper, until one day, Life for him lost its reason. He had no faith in any man, not even himself. He couldn't love or feel loved. He was sick with experience. He began to die. One day, a fool wandered into the castle and found the king alone. Now, being a fool, he was simple-minded. He didn't see a king. He only saw a man alone and in pain. And he asked the king, what ails you, friend? The king replied, I'm thirsty. I need some water to cool my throat. So the fool took a cup from beside his bed, filled it with water, and handed it to the king. As the king began to drink, he realized his wound was healed. He looked in his hands, and there was the Holy Grail, that which he sought all of his life. He turned to the fool and said with amazement, How could you find that which my brightest and bravest could not? The fool replied, I don't know. 
I only knew that you were thirsty. A pure child is called innocent, yet as an adult, we label him a fool. We mistake his vulnerability for foolishness, which is unfortunate because there is wisdom to innocence. We complicate the world with ambition and desire, but innocence cuts through to what ails you. What is it that we ultimately need? We mistake vehicles of happiness for happiness. And perhaps it's not achievement, money, or power, but rather friendship, happiness, and love we need. After all, why did we originally pursue glory? We believed there was a way to become happy. And somewhere along the way, we forgot and got burned by the quest. And perhaps the fools who see friends rather than adversaries, who do not care about achievement, exist to remind us of what life is about, of what life has always been about. But from the wisdom of innocence, we get to the second lesson, crossing the threshold. And what is a threshold? It's the thing that must be exceeded for a certain reaction to occur. It's something that we are all faced with constantly. And each time we must make a choice. Do I cross this threshold or not? In Goodwill Hunting, written by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon and directed by Gus Van Zandt, Robin Williams plays Dr. Sean McGuire, a therapist to self-taught genius, Will Hunting. Hunting, having had a traumatic upbringing, handicaps himself from new life experiences out of fear. Not physical fear, Will Hunting has no qualms about getting into a street fight. What Hunting fears is the invisible, the emotional pain, something he endured too much of. In his work with McGuire, instead of exposing himself, Hunting deflects and masks himself behind sarcastic quips and intellectual knowledge. McGuire challenges Hunting to drop his defensive mechanisms and open up. But to do that, Hunting must allow himself to be vulnerable first. I thought about what you said to me the other day about my painting. Ah. I stayed up half the night thinking about it. Something occurred to me. I fell into a deep, peaceful sleep and I haven't thought about you since. You know what occurred to me? No. You're just a kid. You don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. Why, thank you. It's all right. You've never been out of Boston. Nope. If I asked you about art, you'd probably give me the skinny on every art book ever written. Michelangelo. I know a lot about him. Life's work, political aspirations, him and the Pope, sexual orientation, the whole works, right? I bet you can't tell me what it smells like in the Sistine Chapel. You've never actually stood there and looked up at that beautiful ceiling. Seen that. If I ask you about women, you'd probably give me a syllabus of your personal favorites. You may have even been laid a few times. You can't tell me what it feels like to wake up next to a woman and feel truly happy. You're a tough kid. When I ask you about war, you'd probably uh, throw Shakespeare at me, right? Once more into the breach, dear friends. But you've never been near one. You've never held your best friend's head in your lap. Watch him gasp his last breath, looking to you for help. I ask you about love, probably quote me a sonnet. But you've never looked at a woman and been totally vulnerable. Known someone that could level you with her eyes. Feeling like God put an angel on earth just for you. Who could rescue you from the depths of hell. And you wouldn't know what it's like to be her angel. To have that love for her be there forever, through anything, through cancer, 
and you wouldn't know about sleeping, sitting up in a hospital room for two months, holding her hand, because the doctors could see in your eyes that the terms visiting hours don't apply to you. You don't know about real loss, because that only occurs when you love something more than you love yourself. I doubt you've ever dared to love anybody that much. I look at you, I don't see an intelligent, confident man. I see a cocky, scared, shitless kid. But you're a genius, Will. No one denies that. No one could possibly understand the depths of you. But you presume to know everything about me because you saw a painting of mine. You ripped my fucking life apart. You're an orphan, right? Do you think I'd know the first thing about how hard your life has been, how you feel, who you are? Because I read all of the twist. Does that encapsulate you? Personally, I don't give a shit about all that because you know what? I can't learn anything from you. I can't read in some fucking book. Unless you want to talk about you, who you are. And I'm fascinated. I'm in. But you don't want to do that, do you, sport? You're terrified of what you might say. How much do we stand in our own way because of fear of vulnerability? Like the boy king, Hunting had no faith in any men, not even himself. He couldn't love or feel loved. He was sick with experience. Without vulnerability, there is no courage. And without courage, we'll never cross the threshold. No amount of intellectual knowledge can replace experience. A life without experience is absent of sickness because it is absent of living. What a shame, then, to miss out on the joy of living. It's a risky proposition, living, but it's one worth the risk, even when it stings. And from crossing the threshold, we get to the final lesson, Carpe Diem and the Dead Poets Society. It's not just a way to end the lessons of this podcast, but also a way to understand the life of Robin Williams. He went from a fool to crossing the threshold to becoming himself a dead poet. In Dead Poet Society, written by Tom Schulman and directed by Peter Ware, Robin Williams plays John Keating, an English teacher at an all-male elite prep school. Through the works of dead poets, Keating inspires his students to live, to really live, and to know what it means to be alive. Seize the day. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Why does the writer use these lines? Because we are food for worms, lads. Because believe it or not, each and every one of us in this room is one day going to stop breathing, turn cold, and die. I'd like you to step forward over here. Peruse some of the faces from the past. You've walked past them many times. I don't think you've really looked at them. They're not that different from you, are they? Same haircuts, full of hormones, just like you. Invincible, just like you feel. The world is their oyster. They believe they're destined for great things, just like many of you. Their eyes are full of hope, just like you. Did they wait until it was too late to make from their lives even one iota of what they were capable? Because you see, gentlemen, these boys are now fertilizing daffodils. But if you listen real close, you can hear them whisper their legacy to you. Go on, lean in. Listen, you hear it? <clears throat> Seize the day, boys. Make 
extraordinary. Let us live. Let us fulfill our capacities. Seize the day. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. With courage, vulnerability, and the purity of a fool who's willing to ask, what ails you, friend? If you like what you heard, please support us on Patreon. Patreon.